featuring D'Addario's proprietary NY steel wire and our impossibly thin protective coating. XS Electric lets you bend further and play longer with a sound that stays timeless. Okay, so Jeff, this is your iconic 1960 Les Paul. Yes, uh, it is. Yeah. That's what I hear. Right, yeah. Tell me about when you got it. Tell me about the whole crazy journey. I, uh, well, it, we, a long time ago, 1967, uh, the guy that was managing us, a guy named Bill McEwen, managed a band called The Hourglass, which was Greg and Dwayne Allman. Sure. So I got to know those guys really well. In fact, I think Greg was, I think Dwayne was the first guitarist I ever heard that really was like, whoa. Right. Uh, especially like in a room, you know. Yeah. I didn't see Jeff Beck this close, you yeah. know, but we'd sit around a play and I'm like, dang. Yeah. It just gave my, I got, went from that, got to play an acoustic guitar thing to like, I think I need something like that. <laughs> and he was playing a telly uh, with a Strat neck on it back then. Oh, that's he hadn't right. gotten into the Les Pauls. Uh, years later, um, I had a couple, I had a TV Junior and some other guitars, uh, but I didn't have a, uh, like a, a full Les Paul, two pickup Les Paul, yeah. yeah. And we, uh, I had a custom, I had a 56 custom that I bought in Denver. Great guitar. Great guitar, and I went to see, this is the only time I saw the original lineup of the Almond, of the Almond Brothers, uh, and it was, uh, I think it was Mississippi State University. We had a day off. I, my memory is not totally working on this. I thought we opened for them, but I can't find anything to document that. Yeah. But Jimmy and I and the other Jimmy, Ibby, went to see them play and sat in the front row and just like. Right. And they were loud and the best kind of loud. You oh, know? yeah, yeah. And I hung out with Dwayne afterwards, and he's like, hey, my nickname was Duffy back then. That was my childhood nickname. Hey, Duffy, how you doing? I'm like, hey, man. I said, man, it's a beautiful guitar because he had, I don't think he had the Dark Burst. I think he got that in June. This is 1971. So this would be the... We the, play with them like... The Sunburst. The, the first Sunburst, though. Yeah. Uh, that he after played, the Gold Top. Yeah. After the Gold Top. Not the last one. Yeah. You know, uh, which gorgeous guitar. All of them. Yeah. Just amazing, iconic guitars. But I was admiring because they all, his first Sunburst had a beautiful grain on it as well. And I always love... You know, maybe it's because of acoustic guitars, but I always love the way they looked. Right. Know, that gorgeous maple. Uh, and I said, that's really cool. I said, yeah, I got a Les Paul. And he said, what'd you get? And I said, well, I've got this, uh, you know, black custom. It's a 56. It's great. He says, yeah, those are fine, man. He says, but you got to get a guitar with humbucking pickups. <laughs> I said, what's a humbucking? And he said, he said, humbucking. And I went, oh, okay. So I I bought a set of brand new humbuckers and put them in the 56 to get the P90s out. Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> I know, and I played that guitar for a while and a, a couple years later I met a guy that was playing a club in Colorado and he had this. And I said, man, you be into selling that thing? He said, yeah, I like it, I've been playing it a couple of years. And he wasn't crazy about it though. Uh -huh. You know, I'm good, <laughs> the wheels are turning. Because you never saw him. Right. Back then you saw them more often than now, but uh, so I said, well, I got a custom. I brought it down to him and it had the humbuckers in it. He said, do you still have the P90s? I said, yeah. And he says, you put them back in there and I'll think about trading you. We'll figure out, we'll work out a deal. So I took it, I took it back to a luthier friend, my friend John Graven, who's a great guitar builder. He used to work for Gruen. Uh, he, he put the P90s back in it and then I, showed up with the P90s and a twin, a Tweed Deluxe amp, a Tweed Deluxe, not a twin. Yeah. No, but, and the guy said, done. And Gibson did a re- 2015. Did, yeah, yeah, did this on the Jamie's holding right now. Yep, it's a collector's choice number 33. Now, and, get, I want to see these two together. Oh, yeah. How close are they? Well, I mean, like blind. Depends on how blind you hold. Blind taste test. Can you? Well, depends on how you, you hold them, really. They be quiet. You walk away, and the sustain is don't touch it. <laughs> <laughs> don't, it's got the tag is on it. Uh, I know where you're going to go there. All these little dings, uh, the folks at the custom shop copied. Uh, our buddy Mitch, I think, it's Mitch that did this. Uh, one of Tom Murphy's main guys. Yeah. 
copied that he missed, that ding, he missed this one. ding. <laughs> I know, right? And they, literally, they, they had this guitar for about five months and scanned it. I mean, CT scan, all yeah. this stuff, mapping, computer mapping. And they came up with that. I mean, and they, it's, they really nailed it. It's gorgeous. I mean, it, see the back. Wow, that's... It's Look at that. Close. Yeah. Wow. See the little, yeah, the little buckle yeah. rash right there. You got the right little there. dinghy there. Yeah, the dinghy, yeah. right. But it's great.